Now, if I go have a look at the actual price, it's $3.80. So we're right in that sweet spot right now. So it's probably good buying right now. Hey everyone, so today I'm looking at Bonsai Partners and a very interesting investment that Andrew Rosenblum has made called Greenlight Management in China. I found out about one of my biggest investment ideas through Andrew Rosenblum, and he might have found another gem. I'll take a higher level look over Bonsai Partners and Greenlight Management today, and we will see if it is worth going deeper into the research. Look, just follow along to learn how to do this yourself, and we will have a target buy price by the end of the video. Look, it's part art and part science anyway, and the more practice we do, the better we're gonna get. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the philosophy of Andrew Rosenblum at Bonsai Partners. So it's, he focuses on uh, inefficient markets and they, the idea is that he's going where others won't go. So China, Australia, Korea, places that are harder for most investors to understand because in these places, you hopefully can get better prices and therefore higher returns. That's the philosophy. So he likes to do very investigative research is how he explains it. So he has people like contacts in China to help him do the actual research in Chinese and get to make sure the language is uh, translatable okay. So he actually understands what's going on from a business level from the ground inside of China. Uh, so that's something that others, a lot of other people won't do. I wouldn't be able to do that myself. So it's good that I have access to someone like him. And he also tries to focus on finding his own sources of information, like having someone he knows in China, for example. And therefore, the idea is that there's value there that a lot of other people will miss. Okay, now looking at his at the current portfolio over at Bonsai Partners, uh, they've got Redbubble as nearly 20%, Greentown Management, which is the company we're gonna look at today, Alibaba Group, which was a new purchase for him in the previous quarter, so Q2, probably buying around that $210, $220 mark. Uh, then Micron Technology, which is, uh, a lot of super investors have this one in their portfolios. Travel Ski Technologies, now this is a small cap Chinese, I think it's an airline or the airport software system inside of China, it's something like that, it's pretty obscure. LKQ, I have no idea, Pushpay, I have no idea. It's got something to do with, I think it might be like, tech for church, for religious places like churches and things like that. Don't hold me on that, I'm not quite sure. Taiwan Semiconductor, that's the, big, the semiconductor plant um, company in Taiwan, of course. And Illumina, I think that's a biotech company. Look, some companies all over the place here. Uh, some of these I really don't understand. Redbubble, I understand in, in detail. Now this is where I got my, my idea for Redbubble was from Bonsai Partners. And it made me do some more research and I saw Redbubble as a great opportunity. I've invested myself. Alibaba, I found from other super investors like Manish Pabrai. I've actually been following Alibaba for years personally anyway. I used to do, um, I used to run a business that needed Alibaba. So uh, I, I've known about Alibaba for years, but Greentown Management being quite a high conviction now, fit, making up 15% of the portfolio, that's very interesting to me. And that's why I wanna dive deeper into that today. So let's talk about Greentown Management. It's on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. They are a re their real estate project management services company based in China. It's a spin-off of a company called Greentown China, and they work on government and commercial projects. It's very asset light, which uh, now I'm getting a lot of this information out from the write-up from Andrew Rosenblum in his uh, letter to shareholders. Now, I'm not a shareholder, but I do. I have gone to his website and signed up to get these letters, and I highly suggest you doing the same thing so you can read this thesis in, in detail about this company. Uh, so I'm just pulling a lot of this information from this thesis. Uh, they reportedly have leading market share. It's reportedly a very strong, a strong. It's reportedly a very strong brand, and it's about a one billion dollars. It's just under a billion US dollars in market cap. So that's a smallish cap company. It's probably for China, it's a small cap company. So let's do my nine point checklist and then I'll give you my opinion at the end. Now, the first thing I wanna look at is revenue growth. And for the last few years, as you can see, it's grown, it's nearly, it's actually doubled in the last three, four years. So yes, revenue growth is there, so that's great. The next thing I'm gonna look for are the gross margins and they've been solid at around about the 50% mark. So that's great, it's above the 40% that I like to see. Happy with gross margins being there. 
So next is return on invested capital. And I'm gonna look at the return on capital, return on equity, return on common equity me metrics here inside of Ticker Terminal. And they've all been really solid here. So they're all double digit, mostly above 20% for most of the time for the last three or four years. Fantastic uh, metrics there. So I'm happy to give that a tick and move on. Now, if I have a quick look at their debt metrics now, their total cash they're sitting on at the moment is 2.29 billion Chinese yuan and only 18 million um, in the debt side. So they have way more cash than they have debt. That's fantastic. Uh, they've even got the current ratio here, 1.64. That's above my 1.5 that I like to see. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. You can give that a big tick for debt. No issues there whatsoever. They've got a lot of cash actually there. So uh, definitely in a net cash position. It's a strong position to be in. The next thing I want to look at is the free cash flow. Now, this has been a little bit tricky for me to find because uh, here in Ticker Terminal, we've got the numbers are fluctuating all over the place and they have this line item called uh, change in networking capital. Uh, now, I've my understanding is we need to subtract this change in networking capital. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this cash from operations number minus the capital expenditure line and then I'm just gonna average it out. And it comes to about 460, 500 um, as, the, as the number. And look, it has grown from, I'm really just looking for the growth here as well. So it's gone from 375 um, minus that 100, uh, that 100 in change in networking capital. So 250 to 450 kind of range. I'm happy to call that growth and free cash flow. It isn't, it isn't easy to find though. So, um, that's how I'm looking at it at the moment. I'm just looking at the average over those three or four years. Now, as Greentown Management is on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, you're gonna need a brokerage account that can handle international markets. So Robinhood and things like that aren't gonna work here. You need something like Interactive Brokers or Saxo Bank. I recommend Interactive Brokers uh, as probably my, my preferred option, just because the fees are really low, the exchange rate fees are low, there's no monthly fee anymore, uh, and they've got a really long stable history um, of operating a brokerage firm. So I think they're the, the best. I have a link in my description if you um, wanna go in just see it see a demo account um, and play around with that. And then if you wanna sign up, go ahead. The next thing we're gonna look at is shares outstanding. We wanna see this declining if possible. If it's growing, it means we're getting diluted. So uh, if I have a look back at 2019, the shares outstanding on that filing date was 1,910. And currently it's about 1,900 and I think it's 60. Uh, so it has, it has gone up, it's gone up by about 1% per year. Uh, so that is actually the first cross that we're gonna, we're gonna put here on the tracker. So the next thing I'm gonna look for is inside of ownership. Now, the CEO, uh, John Jun Lee, uh, owns 0.65% of the company. Uh, it's 46 million Chinese yuan. And he's also, if we look at the recent insider transactions, it's all him buying nearly every quarter. Yeah, every quarter he's been buying more shares. So that's a big tick of approval. You're only buying for one particular reason. That is because you think it's a great investment. You can sell for lots of different reasons. Maybe he wants to buy a private jet or get private schooling for his kids, or I don't know. You can sell shares for lots of different reasons, but you only buy shares because it's a good investment. So strong insider buying is actually really cool to see. So I'm happy to give this a tick. Oh, and another cool thing I found was that I've gone into the annual report here and I'm looking at the compensation, well, the salaries of the, all the directors, and it comes to about 39 million RMB uh, for 2020. Now, that's the salaries of all of the directors, so not just the CEO. Now, the CEO has $46 million, worth, 46 million Chinese RMB uh, in stock. So he's probably only getting, I don't know, maybe five or, or, or 10 million RMB as a salary, but he has 46 million as, the, uh, as his shares, so as his stake in the company. Uh, so his incentives are definitely aligned with the shareholders and that's really important and that's what I wanted to see. Now for super investors, well, Andrew Rosenblum is the only person that I know of invested in this company. Uh, now I wouldn't call him a super investor because he hasn't had the decades of experience like Charlie Munger and Monish Pabrai and Warren Buffett and those guys, but He's done a lot of research in this company and he's already filtered it out. So it helps me not be an idiot um, and me making silly mistakes when somebody who is definitely smarter than me, definitely done a lot more work than me, has already invested heavily into the company. So I'm happy to give that a tick of approval. Um, he runs a fund that has millions and millions of dollars, a lot more money than I'm, that I'm running. So I'm happy to give this a tick. 
Even though it's not like one of my higher profile names, it's still a tick in my eyes. Okay, last but definitely not least, we turn to price. Now, price is obviously the most important thing. We don't wanna overpay for anything. Um, just because a great company might be uh, available to us doesn't mean we pay, you know, 20 times too much for it. We just try to find its value and then hopefully pay under that value. So to do that, what I do is I use my uh, intrinsic value calculator. It's free, it's in the description if you wanna copy yourself. Now I've already gone ahead and filled in all the information for us. So I'm not going back and forth trying to find it all and I've just filled it in already. Now I'm using 20% and 15% as the growth rates over the next 10 years. So we'll fight for the first five years, 20%, the next five years, 15%. Now the company's been growing at around about 30% and that's what it did for 2020 as well. So I'm pulling that quite dramatically back um, just because I wanna be a bit conservative here as well. And I'm also factoring in then that shares are increasing by about 1% per annum as well. I just wanted to factor that in a little bit somewhere. So I'm just being pretty, um, pretty conservative here on the growth rates in my opinion. Now the discount rate that I'm gonna use is 30%. Now a lot of people will use 10 or 15%. I want 30% because I'm trying to get somewhere in the 20% range. And if I aim for 30, well, hopefully, even if I'm wrong, I'm hopefully gonna be somewhere in the 20s. That's what I'm trying to get for my return on investment. And that's what makes a good price for me. Please play around with this yourself. Do whatever it makes you feel comfortable. This is what I like to do. The multiple I could sell it for, well, I'm gonna use it as 15, but at these growth rates, it's probably closer to a 20. Uh, I've already pulled the free cash flow number. Uh, which I calculated, I calculated myself and I uh, have found that somewhere else in Ticker Terminal too. So I can confirm that number at the moment. Shares outstanding, I pulled that from Ticker Terminal as well. The total cash and the total debt I got from Yahoo Finance. So it tells me that the buy price is about $3.50. Um, this is in Hong Kong dollars, by the way, all these numbers are in Hong Kong dollars. Now, if I change that multiple to 20, well, it tells me that I wanna buy it at probably about 380 odd. So somewhere between 350 and $4, 4 Hong Kong dollars is probably a pretty good range. Anything lower than that obviously is better, um, but that's that's a buy range for me at the moment. Now, if I go have a look at the actual price, it's $3.80. So we're right in that sweet spot right now. So it's probably good buying right now. Okay, so my overall opinion is this. The company's been growing at about 30%. The ROIC in 2020 was actually about 30% as well, but I've pulled those numbers back to about 20% to be conservative for the next five years and then slower again. So I feel like I am being conservative here with my price target. It has a large net cash position, so it, puts, it means that it's in a really healthy uh, balance sheet position, which is great. The CEO has been buying aggressively, which I love to see, and just an attractive valuation, but, do we trust the numbers coming out of China? It's definitely a big question mark on that one. The shares outstanding is something to monitor, but look at 1% per year, it's not a big deal at the moment. I will be keeping an eye on that one. The things I still need to learn about this company is I need to understand the runway for growth for the future. Uh, and I also wanna know like what's its competitive advantage. So um, what's stopping other competitors coming in and just eating away at their profits? And I really need to know what I think of the management team and do they have integrity? I, I don't really know much about them at the moment. So I need to read a few annual reports um, is what I'm going to do. Now, if you did get something out of this video, well, please hit that like button for me. It does help my channel grow. And if you have something to say about Greentown Management, maybe you've done some research on it or you've got a, a thread post somewhere that you know about, please share it with me in the comments. I'd love to do some more research into this company. It's definitely something I wanna dive deeper into. A big thank you for staying all the way to the end and I will see you in the next video.